I would like to talk with respect to integrity about planning, conduct, and publication. So please keep, keep this roadmap in mind. So we first talk about ethics and consent. Before you go to ethics, you've got to create the protocol. Before you create the protocol, you've got to ask the right question. You submit this protocol to ethics committee. Hopefully it won't be just the ethics committee of the little clinic where you work because hopefully you will plan to do the research with multiple colleagues and it will be a multi-center study. And then once ethics approval is given, then you will need local approval in order to be able to approach the first patient with the consent form. Even before you approach the first patient with the consent form, you would have gone through the process of creating a protocol, having it reviewed by ethics committee and by the local committee in your own hospital. And you will give a patient information sheet to the patient. Can you see that integrity already comes into play even before the first patient is approached? The study design if with respect to study design, this is like a published infographic. Uh, I'll cover some aspects of it. It relates primarily to publication. But I urge you to think about how fake news is produced by scientists. Well, they can do that by using too small a sample size by not blind testing, by not using control group, by using unrepresentative samples. And to avoid this problem, the greater and the good have created levels of evidence. And they say that experimental or randomized studies are the best, then controlled studies, and then uncontrolled studies. And this is called, well, the hierarchy of evidence. So you would hope that ethics committee would not give approval for study that, for a study that is not at a high enough level of hierarchy of evidence. This is where integrity begins. Address the research question with the correct design. The second element of integrity is the justification for undertaking research. So the first thing you need to do is understand the background importance of the topic. To understand this, you need to examine the prevalence of the disease, the, quality, the effect on quality of life of people, the economic effect, and the priority of patients. It's not a matter of scientific indulgence. It's not a decision a supervisor will make over coffee with the student as to what topic we will study. This topic importance need to be evaluated according to these and more criteria. Once you have an important topic, the next thing to study is why do you need to do the study today? To address this problem, you need to figure out whether previous papers exist on the same topic. What is the quality of these papers? If there are no papers, you can commence a new study. If the previous papers are not of a good level of evidence, then you can commence a new study of a good level of evidence. And if previous papers of good level of evidence exist, then you can think about whether there is a justification for repeating a study of good level of evidence. If you can meet all these criteria, you have the first starting point of a study with integrity that you can present to ethics committee. I take a small break here for any comment or question. Sorry, I have a question about this. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, in the case of coronavirus, it's a, it was a, a new topic, of course, but uh, 
uh, I could have the, the chance to, to read a lot of uh, different papers based on this, so basically on the same on the same uh, uh, topics. Okay, in this case, this uh, methodology is not applicable. So, what do you propose? The people should just keep on repeating the studies? No, they they already did this. But look, some repetition is necessary. It is possible that. Uh, <clears throat> a study that works in a setting, let's say in a country like Pakistan of my origin, may not work in a setting like Switzerland. And in this case, people in Switzerland might say, well, we would like to repeat the study just to check that in our system of healthcare and living and culture, this new intervention could work. But we also try to deal with this problem ahead of time. For example, a vaccine trial may be conducted at the same time in the UK, in Africa, in South America, as well as in Asia, so that when this big study is finished, in fact, the repetition is inbuilt inside the study. But look, nobody is today going to say that Einstein theory of relativity needs to be repeated. Or will they say that? Well, there comes a time when correct factual information gets embedded in the belief system and practice so strongly that no repetition is required. The age of the last paper is not important. But for some other situations, and COVID is a good example, where study repetition may be necessary, or may be inbuilt into planning of an important project. For example, in the case of creating studies that assess the effectiveness of vaccinations. So the model I propose here is a simplistic way to look at it, determine the importance of the problem according to the way it affects society. And then determine if previous research exists on my question, then determine if the existing research is of good or bad quality. And if it is of not such a good quality, then do study of good quality. And then if good quality studies exist, then determine whether it needs repetition in my setting. So I, I think this is a simple way. And in fact, in my opinion, a very logical way, because if you are repeating studies of good quality that don't need repetition, this is, in my opinion, not honest behavior. because the correct honest behavior in this situation would be to use the knowledge previously generated for doing whatever needs to be done.